Right, it's nine o'clock. We got a bit of a full house. Uh, BP, PK, should I start? Okay, thank you, PK. Okay, so what I've done here is I've um, set my iPad up in front of me. That's where I'll be doing everything from. But I have got my Mac screen in front of me, so I'll try and keep looking up at anybody's comments. Um, tell me if I miss anything. Okay, so welcome to grayscale portrait teaching. Um, before we get started, I want to go through a few bits and pieces. One of the first things to get through is I am definitely not the best portrait artist in Sketch Club. Um, however, I still want to go through because I think you can learn something from anybody. You look at anybody's gallery, I think you can learn a little piece of something through looking at any of their work. And the same goes on with anything else that you're trying to learn. You can look into any kind of subject or, or, or talent and no matter how good you think you are, you can always try and grab something from them as well. So um, hopefully you'll take something away from this and hopefully uh, it'll be useful to you. Um, I wanted to go through a few other bits and pieces again before we get into this as well. First, the other thing I wanted to say was a thank you to Black Pawn for such a fantastic web uh, app. Sketch Club is a fantastic community. Uh, these sort of teachings are free. All of these different bits and pieces make all of us a better artist. So I wanted to put a thanks in there before we got started as well. Right, okay. So now into the actual lesson. Uh, so the first few bits and pieces I want to go through, and I'll keep saying these as we go through the whole lesson, is um, first of all set up. Before you start any sort of drawing, make sure you're all comfortable, got your right music on, and you're in the right frame of mind for it as well. Okay, so just getting yourself prepared is one of the best things to get ready for doing a portrait. Second of all, study faces. Doesn't matter where you're looking at them, just keep on looking at different faces and be aware of them as well. So look at in front of you now, you've got Clint Eastwood's face, which is very recognisable. But just when you're watching a film, when you're watching people in the street, just keep an eye on their faces, just taking a bit of it as well. It's always very, very helpful. Also, throughout this actual lesson here, I'm going to keep on referring to contrast. So what you'll see with these images that we'll hopefully go through is, uh, is contrast. So looking for the darks and the lights to bring everything out. And I'll explain why in a second I work in grayscale as well. Um, try to think of the human face with no lines. I know you've got wrinkles, etc., and and the, the darker parts do look like lines. But try and just think of it as dark and light whenever you're working through these portraits as well. Okay. Try not to, if you draw an eye, try, try not to just stick to a, a line eye. Try and think about where it goes dark and where it goes light. Also, think about measures, measurements. It takes a little bit of the beauty out of the art, but it's very essential for making everything looks right is try and compare different measurements when you're doing your face. So we'll spend a little bit of time on that as well. And finally, just practice, practice, practice. Uh, my portraits are very hit and miss, but the more I try, the more I get some of it right. So just keep on trying, keep on practicing. Okay, boring stuff out of the way. Let's go forward into, hopefully this will work. So if I click on here, this should work. Okay, hopefully, there we go. One of the reasons why I've done this is I am colorblind, so I have real trouble with different colors. So I thought I'd set up a little test before we get into the actual main part and wonder what people could see. So Mark can see 12, 8, 5, and can't see anything. Now, if you're colorblind, you should see something different here. So, yes, it's a colorblind test. So, does everybody see 12 in the top left hand corner? Anybody see anything different? Okay, excellent. Now, top right, what do you see? Is everyone seeing an 8? Right, okay. Now for me, I can only see a 3 in the top right hand corner. I can't see the 8 at all. That's all I can see is a 3. Now. Underneath the three to the left, I can't see anything at all. I can't see anything that at all. So you guys now can see something I can't see at all. Cannot see a thing at all. And in the bottom left hand corner, I can see the word no. N-O. Whereas you guys can't see anything in the bottom left hand corner. 
So now, here we go, Enjo Engineer, I know is colour blind as well. So if anybody can see no in the bottom left hand corner, colour blind people can see the no in the bottom left hand corner. Also colour blind people can see the three in the top right hand corner, rather than an eight. Okay, so one of the reasons why I want to bring your attention to this is one of the reasons why I work in grayscale, because I, I can't see colours properly. I get my colours very, very mixed up. I'm red, green, blue, purple, uh, most of them get mixed up as well. Okay, so it's one of the background reasons behind why I do all of this. And I've got a very sad tale about me as a young child who did a very good picture, I thought, of a Roman, and I showed it to my teacher, and she made me go and take it to another teacher to go and see, and both teachers were smirking when they, uh, when they looked at it. And I only found out later that I had done the tunic instead of what I thought was blue, a very nice blue, it was actually bright pink. Uh, and that was one of the first times I realised that my colour blindness was going to have a problem with my art. So this is why I brought it into this as well. This is why I use grayscale. Okay? And if you are seeing some of the stuff which I'm talking about on here, which are colour blind stuff, then uh, by all means there's loads of tests on the internet. You can actually go out there and see maybe you've got a bit of colour blindness as well. Okay, so there we go, a little story out of the way. Okay, I don't know if many of you know this particular fact, but during World War II and Vietnam, colourblind people were actually used to spot camouflage. I don't know if many people know this. Uh, because of the fact that we see different tones, camouflage actually works out... Um, we can see through it a little bit better. Not massively better, but we can see through it a little bit better. Okay, so it has very small advantages and it has a lot of disadvantages. So I'm, I'm not supposed to be able to fly a plane. Uh, I shouldn't be able to teach an art class, particularly. Um, all of this sort of thing. But apparently I can see through camouflage a little bit better. And I'm rubbish at matching clothes up as well. So there we go. A little bit of a fact there for you as well. Oh, hang on. Ah, oh, scroll. There we go, right. What I also wanted to do was go through and just give you an example of a few people that works really well in contrast. So this isn't black and white, there's no grayscale here. Uh, but this guy here, Timothy Bradstreet, he does a lot of um, graphic novels. He works very much in, in contrast. Uh, he does do a lot of black and white work. Uh, but one of the reasons why I like him so much is his contrast, his work with shadows. And down here as well, he does a lot of Punisher work as well. So I thought it was very interesting just to give you two artists uh, and, and examples of, of contrast work, especially ones that I know. So that's Timothy Bradstreet. And here we go, this is Emmanuel Garant, which is a uh, French-Canadian artist. And she does a little bit more of the kind of stuff that I wanted to go through today. So she does this beautiful contrast work using like a, a single natural light source. And this is the sort of thing that I like the most. Okay, so I'm, I'm trying to zoom in a little bit on each of these. I'll give you an example of what I kind of aspire to do here. Okay, so I would urge you to check out her gallery as well. She's a very, very good artist. There we go. And the other thing I wanted to kind of show to you here before we even get into it is um, examples of where she uses contrast where maybe you wouldn't spot it so much. So you'll notice where, let's pick the lady first here. Where she goes for the extreme light down the arm, it's always contrast against something dark. It's a way of bringing it forwards. And the same here against the side of the face and down the back here. So where things start going dark, the background becomes light. And you can see it again up here. Wherever she goes for light, there'll be dark about behind it as well. She's not a um, sketch club artist, I'm afraid, Ron. But I wanted to just pick out for you um, some some fantastic yeah yes yeah, that's a good 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 thing um, just some good examples of contrast and some of the um, the, the artists that I uh, wanted to bring to your attention 
Okay, I didn't want to go overkill with it, but I thought these were really good examples of the kind of lighting that I like personally and what I'll show you later. Okay, so now let's have a look at some celebrity photos. So at the top here we've got Brad Pitt, we've got David Beckham, down the bottom here we've got, um, I've forgotten her name, Scarlett, and Natalie Portman. The reason why I brought these to your attention is because uh, they're different examples of portraits, grayscale, but also different lighting, and lighting is something I want to spend a bit of time on as well. So although there's a bit of soft focus going on here, they've each got a light source. The one I hate the most is this one. It's a single light source from the front. And the shadows kind of bleed around the outside. Yeah, I've got some for the, the, the ladies here and some for the men. I've got Brad Pitt. He's got a source from the left there. Scarlet, they've obviously uh, gone for the soft focus on her a little bit more. And here we go, Natalie. It's much stronger, the contrast. Again, this is the sort of thing I prefer. Okay, one of the biggest mistakes I find when you're trying to do portraits is um, is the flash, a camera flash. What a camera flash is kind of almost designed to do, other than light up your picture, is it will flatten the face. It will get rid of the wrinkles, it will try and push all of those to the back. So it's actually the worst for the kind of art that I want to show you guys. What I prefer, and anyone that's kind of sent me a photograph I've always asked for, is kind of a single light source, a natural light source is the one that works best for me. Okay, so be aware if you're getting people to do a portrait for you or if you're going to do a selfie to work from, then try and lose the flash. The flash is not your friend. Okay, if you're going for a more model like picture, then you can use the flash. And then what happens is you start losing, yeah, window light is, is perfect. So, um, but yeah, if you start using a flash, what happens is you, you start getting more into the habits of doing lines because you lose the shadows and you, you end up having to work with lines but if you go for a single light source uh, like the window this makes for a much better picture and that's what you can see in the, the previous picture again sorry I went for the wrong thing there just popping back here again you can see these are very natural single light sources that she's going for and this is one of the reasons why I picked her for the uh, examples okay Okay, so this ugly mug is me. This is what I'm talking about with different light sources. Okay, so one of these, <laughs> one of these I picked was a single light source from the front, which is the bottom one at the bottom right hand corner there. So the expression is supposed to show you not my favourite one out of the lot. Top left, you've got a kind of diagonally uh, left of this picture is where the light's coming in from. Uh, top right, it's going from the window, you can even see a window in there, and bottom left is a window as well. Okay, so you get an idea of who's talking to you. Uh, uh, yeah, right, the startled look is Elvie's favourite one. That's a deer in headlights look I was going for there. But you get the idea, and I deliberately um, used the iPad um, edit function just to change its grayscale. Uh, if you do want to do that, if you're going to do a selfie and work from that, use the mono edit. Don't use any of the other ones, and certainly don't use the one that's called Tonal. Okay, so the best person you can always find to hand to do a, a portrait of is obviously yourself. Um, if I have to, I will use myself. Um, but I, I recommend trying lots of different bodies, lots of different volunteers. Okay. So, there we go. That was my little kind of build up to it. Now we're going to actually go through and I'm going to draw a symmetrical face. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the symmetrical face, um, but I want to show you that to just go through uh, measurements. I think a lot of you guys here already know measurements and how you do the measurements on a face. Uh, but I want to take you through that. So that's why the symmetrical face can be very useful. Uh, that one I'm going to use David Beckham's face for. Uh, it's a very symmetrical picture, I don't know if you just remember it from previously, it's a very symmetrical face. So it's great to kind of show off what I want to start you guys on. And then we go to a contrast portrait where I've got a lovely volunteer from the audience who's, uh, who's given me a, a picture to use.
Okay, so before we get started on that, has anybody got any questions or anything that they'd like to ask me before I start with that? Mainly about the kind of light sourcing or anything? You don't have to, we can go straight into the pictures if you want. No? Okay. Just do it. Okay, Mark. Uh, cupcakes, uh, I think BP's arranging the cupcakes later. Okay, so we'll get started. Um, right, so bear with me whilst I try and mess around with the screen here a little bit. What I wanted to do is load up this example first before we get started. Right, this here is a version of, where have we got? That's this one here this one here. What I wanted to do is show you kind of how my brain works when I'm putting something together. Okay, we're going to spend a bit of time going back over uh, some of the measurements on the face, but this is how my brain works when I'm doing a particular portrait. So I'll be looking for different areas that I can compare and measure. So here, on the left hand side here, you can see I've put an arrow here. That's because I'm trying to check the angle of this and I'm comparing it constantly against this kind of thumbnail portrait of me on the right here uh, on the left here so this is one of my examples I, I would look for the angle on that I'd look for the angle on the head here I'd look for the angle on the top of the hair and I start creating gradually a very quick idea of where everything is so my jawline here to about here I'm measuring up to the top of the glasses I check my range from the chin down to the bottom of the t-shirt here. I'm checking the top of my forehead here to here. And I'm being very aware of where my light sources are. So I already know that my, gray, my, that my light areas are up here. Got a light area here. My nose, which I hate, has got the light here, 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 etc. So, before I even get started, I'm trying to get a good idea of angle. There's another angle there that I'm looking at, another angle here that I'm looking at, and I'm, I'm getting how to compare it against stuff as well. So I know this angle here, and I'm trying to compare it against the straight angle of the glasses here as well. Okay, it's not an exact science, but I'm always, because I don't use grid work, I have to try and use um, other reference points as well. Okay, so everything I'm doing here again looking at the neck how much distance have I got here to here is that right so that's the angle I'm looking for down here okay this is far too long that's far too long so then I know that the angle this would have to be changed this is this is a wrong angle so I use points against each part and I use it as a measurement point so the hair here is roughly the middle of here the angle up here as well Okay, so I did warn you when I start going through the measurement stuff, it loses some of the the fun, I guess, a little bit because I'm constantly trying to measure stuff. But it's because I, I don't, I'm not breaking it down into squares. I'm not breaking it down into a grid. I've got nothing against grids, by the way. Um, it's just I'm too lazy to use them, uh, and because I don't have a grid to use, I have to use other reference points. So even the radiator behind there, I know the radiator is going at this sort of angle here. It's kind of intercepting my hairline there. So that's another measuring point. I've got it comes out kind of roughly here on the other side. So all of this allows me to try and work out stuff. So if you think about it, it is a grid, but it's a grid broken down by the actual picture. Okay, so enough of the demos, let's get rid of me and let's go for a picture from scratch. Oh, sorry. Let's go back again. Let's do a new. Okay, so here we go. Blank canvas. Right, so I don't ever start with a white canvas. I, I, I try and fill in, sorry I keep on stopping, I'm just checking I'm not missing anything on the, uh, on the, the wording here. So uh, I try and always start with an appropriate kind of background for whatever I'm drawing. So like I promised, we're going to use Beckham for this one. By the way, I'm not a big fan of Beckham at all, but he does have a very symmetrical face in this particular picture. There we go. So, 
what we're going to do here, I'm going to show you cheating method for getting started and it's a very good way of making sure you get your measurements right. The chances of this looking like Beckham at the end are quite slim because I'm going to try and do this quite fast. So what I always do, like I said earlier, is I try and pick a particular background colour. Because we're working in grayscale, everything's easy for me because there's a grayscale here. So th this is my palette. I know I'm not going to go wrong. Everything I'm going to work from is in this column here. Okay, so um, I always like to try and pick somewhere in the middle because you want to kind of try and branch out. You want to have your, your darks, your shadows. Uh, one second, my PC is just playing up. Uh, bear with me. There we go. Oh, crap. There we go. Sorry, back again. Right. So, yeah, never ever start with your background being too far to the right or too far to the left. You're always looking at the middle somewhere. So, Beckham's face was quite light, so we're going to start with the to the right of the middle. There we go. Now... I want to reiterate, I don't particularly like this fella much, but he's a good example for this. There we go. Right. The other thing I always need to make sure I'm doing, is moving my mobile phone away from me, there we go, um, is uh, don't ever let your opacity of your brush, which is down the bottom here, this is your, down the bottom right hand corner, hopefully you can see that moving, go above 50%, you don't need to go any, anywhere near 50%, usually start around about the 35% mark. And then I pick a brush which is either left or right of the actual middle, the, the, the one I've just chosen. So I'm actually going to start off here, which is um, third from left. I know you guys can't see what I'm picking, so third from left. Okay, and again, I don't have a grid, so what I have to work with is measurement. So I can see here, the top of his head is kind of coming in roughly at this kind of angle. There we go. Let's just go slightly down the page. Like I said, this won't look anything like him by the time we finish because I'm going to try and do it really quickly so that we can move on to the main portrait afterwards. Okay, but this is our starting portrait part. There we go. Um, I know that uh, Laura recently, I think she was doing, I think it was Laura Grimes was doing some portrait work. I don't know if Laura's on here. Uh, but she made a, a statement that the, the human face isn't symmetrical, which is a perfect spot on. It's not at all. Uh, even Beckham's face isn't, but this is a good kind of starting point for this sort of thing. Okay, many of you artists on here already know all this kind of stuff, so I do apologise, it's going to be boring for you. Um, but doing your, your measurements on the face, there's another reason for me doing this quick portrait, is the eyes are always halfway down the face, so straight away I know the eyes are going to be roughly around here somewhere. Okay, and then the nose is going to be halfway down from that to the bottom, and then the mouth is going to be halfway between that and the bottom as well. Okay. The eyes are going to be, if I draw a line up from here, the eyes are going to be in the middle here somewhere. There we go. And they're actually an eye width apart. I'm sure many of you know this, which is why I'm not spending a huge amount of time on this. Okay. And then the nose is also going to be all the way down here. It's a width apart here. Mouth center. Okay, so I'm going to keep going down this road of just gradually starting with my rough outline. Like I said, for this face I don't care, it's not going to be spot on, it's just for showing you guys some, some of the measurements. Okay, so let's just zoom in again, so here's my eye here, it's going to be an eye's width apart, width apart here, there we go, the nose halfway down here, mouth halfway down to the chin here. Okay. So that's your basic kind of thing here, your ears just up from the eyebrow there, and they end at your nose as well. He's got some big ears now. There we go. Okay, so there's my basic sort of layout for this. Now I can start with my, my shading. So for my shading, I want the brush fairly large, so let's go about this sort of big. Hopefully you can see that pop top of Beckham's head there. And I want to just drop it down here a little bit. So it's one of the, it's the, if I go one more, it's exactly the same as the background, so you won't see anything. I'm scribbling on there at the moment, you can't see anything. So I'm actually just going to go one up from that for now, just to get a bit of subtle lighting on here. And I'm going to start with the dark around the sides, and like I said, don't go anywhere above 50%. There we go. So I start just bringing in the shades from the left, and because we're doing mirror, which I put down the middle here, sorry, mirror horizontal. 
and it's obviously mimicking it down that side as well okay so there we go we're just bringing in the the shade here and what I would recommend is you do not touch the black or the white so far left or far right until the very end sorry brush good question Violet so use any brush you like the brush that I use hopefully you can see there is this one here it gives a very kind of natural look or, or I use this one here they both give you a kind of uh, a sketchy kind of natural look but by all means use any sort of brush that you like the the airbrush one here if you do that that will give you a much kind of softer look I sound like a DJ <laughs> Hopefully that's a good DJ. Okay, so we bring it back here, and this is the one I'm using for for all of this. Actually, I don't actually switch away from using a single brush. So I always stick to this kind of brush here. Uh, also, I'm a simple man, so I only use Sketch Club in a very Okay, back again, so hopefully everyone can hear me. Okay, excellent. Right, we will get crashes, it's just um, spotting them when they happen. Okay, what I was about to say before it crashed was, I'm a very simple man, I don't use Sketch Club to its full potential, so I'll stick to one brush, and I'll stick to... Uh, normally two layers. Uh, the bottom layer I just use for the, the background and the one above it I use for the actual face but in this case I was going a little bit too fast, got a little bit nervous so I, I've stuck it all in one. It doesn't matter, it's, that's fine for what we're doing here. Okay, so let's go back, let's um, let's go back to our Beckham face, here we go. And there we go, so we've got a nice bit of grey around the side, we're going to go down the bottom here as well, just make it a little bit larger, saves on time. There we go. I'm just getting in the, the kind of just base for the rest of the work. Okay, and when we do the next portrait, which is the slightly more complicated portrait, it's going to follow exactly the same principles as this. Uh, what's the average brush size do I use? Uh, good question. I don't know the brush size. Let's go back to brush. Here we go. So at the moment it's on 28. 28 is for my heavy shading, and it will get less and less and less as I try and get more and more detailed. Okay, but oh, I've broken my own rule here. I've gone above fifty percent. Try not to go above fifty percent when you're doing this. Right. Okay. So now I'm going to go in a little bit finer. Um, it means I'm taking it a little bit more seriously now. There we go. Finer for the nose. Just keeping within all my measurements. There we go. He's got a dark looking lip. There we go. And just fill it all in there. Right. So we've got in our first kind of layer. So now I'm going to gradually move to the left and occasionally I'll go to the right. But I'm, I'm making my way out gradually from the middle. I'm, I'm not jumping all over the place. I'm just gradually moving further and further left and then in a second I'll do right as well. Okay. Now this works like contours. So the dark is obviously where we're going deeper into the face and away from the light source. And light is where we come close to the light source. Okay, so again I move my... I size my brush up if I want to try and get a little bit more shading in an area. What it does as well with this brush, if I zoom in, you can see it's quite a rough kind of look to it. I, I personally like that. It, it gives it a more natural look. It's a bit more of a kind of charcoal look. Um, and I try and keep it large for the shading bits. And then when you see me drop the size of it, that's when I'm going in for a little bit more of the detail. Okay, so just try and keep it large for as long as possible. And then just drop it down again if I want to go in for the detail. And again, like I said, this is not going to look like him, I very much doubt, because we're going to try and spend only a very little bit of time on him. But hopefully, you can see how I'm gradually building this up. And it's a really good way of practicing your measurements on the face by starting with a symmetrical one. Okay. 
So if I zoom out a bit, hopefully you're beginning to see a face, even if it doesn't look like his. You're beginning to see a face now. Okay, and and Panda, you 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 will you will be able to do this. I, I am not an intelligent man. This is uh, this is cheating ways of doing a face. Okay. And sadly, I get excited by doing this each time I move further and further. So again, right, I talk to the white or the black, I get a little bit excited. There we go. So again, we're doing shading. And as I go further and further to the left or the right, I've got to be more careful about how far my opacity is. So I drop it if I'm not too sure. <laughs> I'm glad that one got dictated on there. I get excited as I go along. There we go. And now I can start just gradually building it up. I'm just kind of tapping it on here. And again, the cheekbones, because they're nearer the source of the light. There we go. And the chin. So just... If you're never, if you're not sure, because I'm used to working in grayscale, but if you're not sure, if you just kind of squint your eyes, keep them kind of half open, your your eyes will kind of pick out the the darks and the lights quite quickly. There we go. So again, I've dropped the size again. I've dropped it by about half again. I'm not getting head off. That means I'm going to start doing some details. Be on the detail just yet. There we go. A bit on the face. A bit on the eyes here. There we go. And just tap it on. It's, you don't need to go crazy on the detail at this point. There we go. And again, and we can start zooming in. We're just still on our subtle mid-tones at this point in time. And if I zoom in, be aware that my, I don't know if you can see it, my, my size of my brush is still large. So I want to drop it again by another half if I zoom in. And I can start picking out the details like the, the eye. There we go. Right, so I'm not going to go crazy on this one. We'll give in fairly soon. There we go. And draw his, a bit of his mouth in there as well. Okay, so we're looking like a bit of an alien now, but we'll tighten that up in a second. Okay, and again, I've dropped it further to the left, so I keep him working outwards on both sides. There we go. And I need to bring this back up again, because we zoomed out. So bring the size back up again, and we start working on the face. I didn't bring it out enough. There we go. So that's... Are we on that one? No, we're in the darker one now. Okay. There we go. So the darker I go, the more serious we are with what we're doing. And again, we're not looking for lines. I'm not drawing any lines here as as such. I'm trying to keep to just shadows and light and dark. Lines are going to be the bane of you trying to put together a picture. There we go. There we go. I'll get bigger again for the shading. And I've, I've really ruined his chin here. I don't know if you can see that. I've really thinned him off too much. But that's fine. We can go back. We can pick our mid-tone. We can go in half there. And we can just drag it out. Again, checking the angle against anything else on there. So I'm actually checking the angle against the, uh, the neck. And I'll just try and mimic it again. Bring it back in again. Okay, I think it was something Sebastian said during one of his training lessons was just try and just work over the top of stuff you don't need to erase stuff necessarily you don't need to use undo unless you really mess up you can do if you need to but just try going over the top if you can sorry panda am i talking too much okay and then if you force yourself into this habit of not erasing stuff and, and just going over the top of it you'll, you'll get into a car it's more of a, a natural media type way of doing stuff anyway uh, you're, you're, you don't really get to erase like a, an oil portrait or something like that you, you, you have to go over the top 
So it gets you more into that kind of natural painting type format. Okay, so again, I'm not going. I'm just going to try and finish a little bit more of this, so you get the idea of going all the way through to the end of my palette, and then we'll get started on our female model for this evening. Okay, so we're just going to again. If I zoom in a bit more, I go smaller again. Every time I zoom in, I go smaller on the brush. Okay. There we go, and you're starting to now get into the darker areas. I'll give them a bit of a stupid smirk. There we go. Oh, are we losing Rom? There we go. And again, if I want to. I lower my opacity a little bit more, I can use the same dark here but I just do it in layers until I start picking out some of his cheekbones etc down around the side here, there we go okay we're nearly there guys and then we'll move on to the lovely female portrait because oh, I want to do a lot of that for you guys tonight before we run out of time as well so I'll try and keep to the maximum of 90 minutes so that you guys don't get bored of hearing you. That's very true. Eh? Like I said, he's a good choice for a symmetrical face. Doesn't mean I'm a big fan of his. Um, there we go. And I'm just sticking just to my dark here for now. There we go. So he's got an eye in there as well now. We zoom out. It's not Beckham face, but if we had more time, we could just kind of narrow it off a little bit more as well. Okay, now the scary part. This is this is all the fun stuff done. Now, now the scary part. Once I've gone out this far on my range. Oh, sorry, I haven't gone as far as this one yet. Here we go. We're going to use this one one more time, and I'm just going to get the the high points again. I'm just gradually tapping and building this up. Like I said, these are the bits that are closer to the light source. These are the higher points on his face. I'm just going to go half size again because I'm going in for the, the nose. I'll branch it out a little bit at the top there. By the way, if again, I'm not promoting this guy. I'm not a big fan of his. But um, it's a very good face for you guys to try and track down. It's very good for just starting your portraits off with. And it's very good for designing faces as well. It's got a very kind of computery type face. There we go. And then finally, I'd move on to the, the more serious. We've got the black and the, uh, the white here. I would finish off with these. Now, when you get to the white and the black, you really want to make sure your opacity is quite low. So I've got it at the moment, 17%. You want to keep it quite low and just gradually build it up because it will really make a big difference on the face. That's right, Panda. Dun dun dun. There we go. And what you should start seeing when I zoom out in a second, this will start really giving you your deeper areas on the face. There we go. Under the nose there. And like I said, if you if you're not picking out this stuff as well. Don't worry, uh, Song, he's famous for being a, a footballer, that's it. Um, there we go, and he's got a wife that doesn't know how to smile as well. There we go, so... There we go. You can see now, we've kind of created a very generic -y face. You probably wouldn't be able to tell it's David Beckham from this, which is fine by me. But I've now started to pick out all of the darker areas. His eyes are dark as well. I fill those in. There we go. He's got a bit of a crow eye thing going on there as well. Crow foot. There we go. Right, I'm nearly done with this, and then you guys can. I'm going to bore you guys. Okay. 
So hopefully you've got a good idea from that how we're going to use this to go on to the actual main portrait session. Okay, so this is how I go through my grey scale, this is how I use the background as a grey. It's how when you're looking at a face you're measuring it for each of the different pints as well. I can see that the angle's wrong on his face, but then if I had more time I could spend dealing with that. I can turn off the mirror at any point I want, so let's turn that off now. And then I can start picking out the stuff on his face which isn't symmetrical. Okay, so what I can do here as well, thank you very much Pico, is I can use my lighter shade here. Let's build this opacity back up again, but keep it below 50%. I can uh, pick out some of the lights on the eye here. I can even add in a fake bit that doesn't appear on the portrait. If I put in a little bit of light here, a little bit of light here, you give it a bit more of a kind of wet look eye. Yeah, I can start picking out some of the, the shades around here as well. I can just go a little bit more crazy with it. The nose needs a little bit more light down there as well. Okay, so there we go. That's our demo of a symmetrical face done. Um, hopefully everybody liked that or it got something from it. Uh, the main things to take away were the measurements. So the eyes were halfway down from top to bottom. Uh, the eye length here to here. And you've got a, an eye's length in between the two eyes. Uh, you've got your nose from halfway between the bottom and here. And you've got your eye and your pupil is at the corner of the mouth here. Okay, so keeping all of these kind of measurements consistent is how we built up the face. Yeah, so I know a lot of you guys already know this. There's a lot of great portrait artists that have been very kind enough to join on here as well. So I know that they know this sort of stuff. Um, some of my favourites are on here. I could spend all day telling you my favourites are on here. Uh, they already know who they are. Um, but right, there we go. So that's the measurements on the face. And remember what I was also going through as well was checking out for angles. So the eyebrow angle up here. Checking where the light source is. So he's got it smack bang in the middle. Which is a very good way of trying to make yourself look more beautiful. Um, and then just building up your greys. So what I was showing you guys is start from the middle and work your way outwards on both sides. Okay, so let's put that into practice on the, the main portrait now. And hopefully I can get it as good as I want to. But I'm also very aware of time. So, here we go. Before I move on to this, any questions guys? I'll look at the Mac now so I can read your questions if you've got any. Okay, Hall Spirit, have you got a question? Okay, well... Yeah, I, could, I can post anything you want up here. You want? Oh, too late, I didn't save it though, sorry. Um, Agent, so I know you said you can do the measurements, but you can't do portraits. But if you um, if you try and do the the mirror, so when I started that one, I came up top here and I picked mirror horizontal. Just use that as your, your starting point. It will, it will help you. Tape down. Doesn't matter. So just get your basic head shadow, if this is particularly accurate or not. And then just... Go wild on it. I know my eyes are somewhere in the middle here, and I'm my nose here, and, and just do it all very loosely. And once you get it down to pat with that, you'll find that the portrait comes off of it quite quickly. Um, I won't be drawing a bomber during this session, I'm afraid. Because um, I have, we did Beckham for the ladies, we got a, um, a lovely volunteer from the audience for the, for the gents. Okay, but agent, I'm, I'm sure you can do it. So, what canvas do I prefer? Uh, how do you mean, Jules? Sorry, on here. Right, okay, let's do one at a time. So, Jules, when you say canvas, what do you mean? Uh, I, I just use, like I just showed you, exactly what I've got. Oh, what canvas size? Sorry, okay, good question. Uh, so, I always go for the iPad Retina screen, 1536 by 248. Okay. Um, although, however, if I pick a, uh, a photograph which isn't more of a square shape, then I will go for the 2048 by 2048. But generally, it's the iPad Retina sc screen I go for. Okay, so that, that's the kind of size that I go for normally. Uh, there was a question up here, um, how dark or light should you, your shadows clash with your portrait? It's a very good question. I, I base it on the, the photograph. 
uh, which is why I'm very picky about the, the, the photographs that I use. So um, you have to be aware that something that goes too stark on the light, so if it goes too bright, it becomes very hard for you to kind of draw it, um, which is why natural light is probably my favourite for doing stuff. How big can you get away with? Um, I don't know, I've never really played with the settings. Like I said, I use it very simply, so I always stick to what I've got in front of me here. I very rarely change the resolution down the bottom. Okay. So, um, let's get on, otherwise we're going to run out of time. So, the wonderful lady from the audience is Dee Dee, and she has put forward her picture here for me to use. Now, it's not natural light, but it is light coming from the top here. Is there a too dark? Um, if you start going too dark, uh, if you start going for massive contrast, you'll you'll look a little bit more like um, the, the the Timothy Bradstreet that we looked at earlier. It's it's very almost horror contrast when you go too light or too dark. But it's something that you can play around with. It's something you you might like. Let me see if I can do it here quickly. You might like just going. Let's build this right up to the top here. You might like just a real picking out the darks on the face uh, I'm not going to be able to do it like this I'm rushing it too much but you might want to go for a very extreme light and dark like this it will look more like that Timothy Bradstreet that we were just looking at there we go but that is, is very extreme so in here I can already see before we get started we've got a real light and we've got real dark there and it's got enough kind of mid greys in between as well so um, thank you DD for putting your portrait forwards for this, it's very kind of you now DD's already seen the result that I want to go for because I did do a practice run of this before but we'll see how close I can get okay so again I start with my background and my background is always in the middle, so I do colour fill and I pick, there we go, I picked middle uh, left this time, I wanted to start quite dark and that's my starting point I go for the layer above it, so I keep the grey behind it and what I want to do is start marking down the, the, the face, I want to get my basic face shape again I want to check that I'm below 50%, maximum 50% so I'm just going to drop it a little bit more on my opacity my size is a little bit low, let's bring that up a little bit and I want to make sure that I'm zoomed out if I'm zoomed out and I start putting this together I, I can see everything at once I can get all my angles and I can keep it quite basic at this point there we go and I'm just getting angles here, I'm trying to get the hair angle there we go alright and something I wanted to say at the beginning, I forgot to say it so I'll say it now is some of the mistakes you make you got to be aware of so I'm aware one of my bad habits that I do is I elongate people's noses I don't know why I get the uh, the measurements wrong on noses quite a lot so be aware of your weaknesses and try and make sure you try checking them before you go on don't get precious as well about anything that you do so you might think that's a fantastic face shape I'm not going to change that but be willing to change it at any point in the portrait if you want to make a good portrait okay so again here we go I've started off really dark on this one uh, the, the Beckham one we did earlier was quite a subtle one I've started off quite dark on this one there we go just getting in some basic shape of Dee Dee's face here yeah I skew a lot of it as well I, I wouldn't be surprised if as we're going through this you notice that I'm getting some of the measurements very wrong but the main thing to take away from this is the, the build up of the face using the left to right or right to left type policy there we go and just starting rough, it doesn't matter if it doesn't look much like your subject when you first start off because we're, we're starting rough, we're going to build on it anyway yeah, so those lips are the lovely lips of DD which is a community brush as well by the way And I'm just keeping it very basic at the start here and hopefully we get a face out of it 
So another mistake that people make when they're doing portraits, again I know this because I do all of these things myself, I don't claim to be good at anything, there we go, is eyes. Uh, because you, you, you face your, your subject, because you look into their eyes constantly, when you're drawing you tend to make the eyes slightly larger by accident, it's just the way it is. But Tidji, you can, you definitely can. Just start with the, the, the basic symmetrical face and then you'll work from there. And if you're remembering your measurements, and again, I, I'll probably get these wrong, I'm not perfect, but I'll, I'll start to get the, the width of the eye, the, the nose should be a, an eye width apart. And if it isn't, I've got to try and stop myself from being precious about the picture. I quite like this already, but if it's going wrong, I have to correct it. Okay? That's it, you just, it, perfect is, practice is perfect, exactly it. You just keep trying. I've got loads of portraits in my gallery, some are much better than others, but lovely people on here have volunteered their photographs, so I just keep on trying. Okay, so I already know that that is okay, that's, a, that's an okay starting point here. So I went dark to start off with, let's get more of the shadow underneath the chin in there as well. I'm very aware of time, so I'm going to try and speed up a little bit here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the light. So I went to the left, so we're going to go to the right now. So going to the right, and if I'm not too sure how it's going to look before I put it on there, just drop the opacity down a little bit more, and just start where you see the light going. Like I said, we're, we're rushed. Uh, sorry, we're we're rough up until the very last second on the face and then we can spend hours just going through all the details and going, I'm just trying to, if, again if you can't see the light dark very easily when you're looking at it just squint your eyes, just half close your eyes and hopefully you can start picking out where the light is on the face comes quite naturally to me but that's because I'm lazy and I don't use colours there we go. And hopefully we can start seeing something appearing here now. Okay, and I'm going to drop my size down again. If I go in for detail, I'll drop my size down by half each time. There we go. Over on this side here. Check my angles, the eyebrows far too high, so I just bring the angle in. There we go. The nose should be more up here. So go back to my darker shade again. Like I said, don't be precious. I actually really like that, but the nose is going down too far, so I'm actually going to use a bit of dark, bring it up a bit more. There we go. Put a bit more shadow in around the whole face. So I've dropped one shade lighter than the, the, the dark areas on here. It's because I'm rushing it, I'm missing out on shades. There we go. And again, I'm checking the angle of DD's face. And I'm trying to keep some of the. They're, they're not dark, dark tones, but there's still different tones in there that I was missing. There we go, and this is actually a fantastic photograph for working from. It's perfect for this sort of lesson. There we go. And okay, I have to zoom out, try and have a look at it, see what you're missing and see what you're you're messing up on. So down the left hand side there, I need to bring in the definition of the face. As I zoom in, I try and reduce it a little bit more as well. There we go. So I need to bring in my measurements between the eye here, I'm trying to make it darker there, and the side of the head needs to come in, there we go, cheekbone in, there we go. And again, you just keep your opacity low, and it means you can just build it up, build it up, build it up. So dark and light always precede colours in portraits. Um, for my portraits, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, so the dark here is against the light, etc. So Again, this isn't the perfect way of doing portraits, it's my way of doing portraits. 
and my way is certainly not perfect. So just, this is guidelines, you might find this doesn't work for you, you might find this is no use to you at all, but hopefully, at the very least, it will help you think about the dark and the light that you're doing in your portraits. Okay. But yes, I only use I only use grayscale. I, I can do colour portraits because a lovely man here, black pawn, gives me the ability to pick colours. So if I go into the picture here and I hold down my finger on the hair, you can see up the top right hand there it's picking up the colour. So even us colour blind guys can cheat. And even if I can't see the colour properly, I can steal the colour. Okay, so it does allow me to um, to be able to make up for what I can't actually see properly. It's one of my favourite bits. Uh, my other favourite bit as well is, uh, I know we're going a little bit off subject here, is the fact that these have been carefully named for me as well. So even if I can't tell how to mix a colour tone, I can actually just look it up in here. So it really does help. And you can if you want, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'll just show you. You can, instead of going with my grayscale, you could switch it out for your, your kind of skin tones. And then you can work your darks and your lights on from there. It's not something I do. So we'll go back to where I think we were there. There we go. Okay, but it's, it's, a, it's more of a confidence type thing. Sorry, Hall Spirit, go and go for it. Uh, hopefully it's not about Barna. Go on, we'll stop for a question, and then I'll, I'll carry back on with it in a second. Okay, hit me. And to be honest, I was lost in my little world there, so if anybody else has asked any questions, let's go for them. Um, you could apply it to a horse portrait in the fact that if you're going to do a horse portrait, you do your measurements. So, I can't demonstrate on here, but any picture I try and do, I use my measurements that I was doing earlier. So, the angle that I'm working on versus any other part of the, 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 the page that I'm doing. And I didn't ex explain that very well. Let me just... We're going to go a little bit off subject here, but I want to just try and answer your question for you. So, there we go. Just very briefly, and then we'll get back to the portrait. If I'm drawing anything, let's see if I've got a picture of something random in here. Uh, Alright, fine, you'll do. So, I like the marble competition idea, by the way. Right, let's pretend this guy here is a horse. Uh, it doesn't matter that this isn't a portrait now, we've we moved on to something completely different. I can still use the same thing that I was talking about at the beginning to try and work through my angles. So I'm just getting in here. Doesn't matter that this is a bloke and not a, uh, a horse. I can see his neck is straight, so we go down for the neck. I can see the angle of his body goes at this sort of angle here. So again, I'm measuring everything against what I've got. His shoulder's up here. There we go. I know that the arm comes in here. The body behind is coming in at this sort of angle. So again, I'm just using what I've got because I don't have a grid and I don't have any background. So I'm just using everything I've got on the page as my angles and my measurements. So the, the arm and this here has got a gap. So I use the gap as my measurement, etc. So although it's not a face and although it's not a horse, I can use measurements within the actual picture itself to try and draw it. I hope hopefully that kind of answers your question. Okay, but we will get back to just human portraits for now, I'm afraid. Let's go back to our DD. There we go. But hopefully that was kind of useful to you. So yeah, just use what you've got in front of you. That's alright. It's it's just keep on measuring stuff. I know it, it takes a little bit of the, the fun and the beauty out of it, but that's what it's all about. Right, why is my brush not working? It is working. It 
yeah, comparing the sizes against everything. Alright, what am I doing wrong here? Something's gone wrong. Alright, that's what's gone wrong. There we go. So again, when I was looking at that, I think the hair's gone out too far. I could erase it, but I can just go over the top of it as well. Yeah, it's, yeah it is, exactly. Uh, zombie. Well, zombie, if you're going to do a zombie, uh, these questions are quite random. Uh, start with your, your human, because that's what zombies are. And then just start dropping bits off of them or making ooze and stuff coming from them. Okay. Right, well, thanks. Panda. Right, okay, so where were we? We're, so we're just going darker and lighter as we go along. So again, I'm trying to keep the, everything right. The measurement between here and here is wrong. So I need to bring the hair in a bit more. Let's bring the pasty up to near my maximum of 50%. There we go. Side of the mouth here to the side of the cheek. Bring that in a little bit. Angle underneath the chin. Here we go. There we go. Okay, so hopefully you're getting the idea. So the eye here I can see is one of the darker points, so the eye's got to go in there as well. Let's get that dark in there. There we go. Eye in the middle here. Dark here. There we go. Dark down the side here. And hopefully this is starting to look like a face. How about depth, perspective of chin, nose, forehead? How do you mean, DJ? Go on, DJ, sorry. Hit me with a question. DJ, any question? Yep, the chin is closer, so when we're doing our contrast, it's going to be the lighter point on here. Are you asking how the measurements change when you're doing that? I'll keep right, I'll keep looking back up again. Yeah, if you if you rotate the head, obviously the perspective is going to change the angles and everything. The, the human face is still going to keep in the measurements. And that's when I, I have to fall back on more of my measuring parts against each other. Okay, so if I let's just use a patch up here. So if I'm If I'm doing my human head up here, okay, we've obviously been doing one that's this, yeah? What I can do is I rotate it round, there we go, and my face is now looking this way. As soon as I do that, sorry, there's a distracting bits going on here. As soon as I do this, this is when I have to rely more on my angles. Okay, so if, if people are getting bored of this face, which is a shame. I can go on to the, the rotated side. Okay, so I would now need to really work on the angles of things like the nose, because it's now rotated, it's not center anymore. I now to, need to work out how much cheekbone, etc., is down the side, and I work the angles here as well. Forehead, etc. So as soon as I rotate the face, I do make things harder for myself because I can't use my single measurements anymore and that's when I start relying more on checking angles basically there's an angle there in the chin, there's an angle there in the uh, the side of the cheek underneath the chin etc up here what kind of angle is it so I don't know if this is answering your question you're right well, as soon as I rotate it I lose the luxury of measurements but then I have new measurements so I start working on different angles on the face as well okay I know we've only got 25 minutes left so what I'll do is I'll, I'll speed up my portrait of DD and we'll do one from a slight angle. Yeah, and and you're right, Angie, and that's what's happening here as well. My my brain naturally wants to rotate DD's face back.
Okay, can you hear me? Are we back on? Can you hear me now? Cool, okay. Right, so what we'll do is we'll spend a little bit more time on this. I do want to kind of show you how far you take it once you're getting through the different shades. And you're right, Angie, as soon as... I, I know that because of the, the head's pointing up slightly, we're kind of underneath the head, the gap on the nose, this bit here, will get less. And the mistake that my brain does is it, it wants me to be facing more so you'll see that it kind of compensates it brings it back again it's very very difficult okay I'll, I'll try and speed things up guys it's uh, I kind of intended on just trying to do as much of this as I could during our, our time together but in order to answer your question I want to try and move on to uh, a side portrait in a second. But you're right, yes. Tilting the head will for shorten stuff, it will um it will change the measurements and that's when you have to really rely more on the, the, the kind of measuring angles on stuff a lot more. There we go. I'm trying to go faster now, I do apologise. Stick with it. Well, I'm, I'm glad it was useful. I, I don't claim to be the best portrait artist. There we go. I didn't notice that my pasty had shot all the way up to the far end there. All right, and the reason why you keep your pasty as low as you possibly can is so that you can layer stuff. I can, I can tap away on here and gradually build up on stuff. It's very true. There we go. Now, like I said, you can use any brush you want. You can use all these techniques with uh, my favourite, which is Sketchy. I really like Sketchy at the top here. Um, you don't have to stick to the brushes that I use. They're, they're for this kind of style. If you change the brush but keep to the methods I'm teaching you, you'll come out with a very different picture anyway. So again, I jump from left to right of my centre and gradually move from centre outwards which I forgot to say as well is if you have by the way what I wanted to also say I haven't read this month's magazine the sketch club do so there's some fantastic artwork in there and it's about portraits as well by some of the artists that will give you some other techniques that are far better than me and they for doing portraits as well and one of those might work even better for you than what I'm going through now so if you haven't got it get it there we go I absolutely love this month's one fantastic some of my favorite artists are in there there we go so I'm trying to get as much of this done as possible. Okay, nearly there. And it's totally free as well, there you go. I wouldn't plug it if I didn't believe in what I was saying. There we go. Okay, so hopefully you can see how we're building this up, and we're going to get on to the, the most exciting ones now, which is the, the black and the white. Bend it like Beckham. There we go. Now you're only looking for the real darkest parts when you move on to these. There we go.
Yeah, right. Getting all my darkest colours in. And then if we had more time together, what I would start doing is starting putting in a bit more of the detail and starting getting less sketchy and more detail, but we don't have loads of time together, I'm afraid. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to, but if you want to get a good pull, it's a shame we could spend ages on this trait going, I'd recommend spending at least, well, an hour and a half on it at least. I have a bad habit of trying to get stuff done in one go, in my lunch break or something, and then not going back to it, so that's why you'll see a lot of my pull traits are within an hour, it's because I get into a bad habit of trying to do them in a lunch break and then finishing. Okay, but we don't have the luxury of time here, so we'll just get to the far corners now. So I've gone all black, so now I'm going to go white. There we go. Keep my pasty down because we're on the dangerous shades now. And you're only looking for the real extreme lights and the real extreme darks. There's very little there. Yeah, I, I have a lot of respect for anyone that can spend more than a couple of hours on anything. I get very distracted very early on, so anyone that spends 90 days or, or hours across stuff, I have a lot of respect for. And you can see it pays off as well. There we go. So nearly done, guys. I don't want to bore you. There we go. But definitely, if you're thinking of doing more portraits, try at least an hour. Unless you're one of my favourite artists, Pod, who can do fantastic stuff in just literally seconds. So, again, I was trying to keep from doing too many names on this, but... Um, there we go, right. So there you go, I think you get the right idea anyway, I won't go crazy. And we have a very basic DD. Well, it's it's all practice, DJ. It's it's something you'll definitely be able to do. Okay, there's our basic DD. What I was trying to do, I'll show you. Was I did this? This is my pre-run yesterday, but admittedly, I did spend a lot longer on it. There you go. I was just using the same techniques that we've just been through there, but I did spend longer on it. Okay, now we've got 15 minutes left. Did you want me to try and do one other portrait from the side, well, it's kind of an angle, or should we call it a day? It's up to you guys. Yeah, that's more complex, you. Yeah. So, I kind of predicted that you might ask for doing a side angle okay yeah good good point we'll start for questions and then if you want we can look at doing this slightly different angle it's entirely up to you so any questions and then we'll do like I said literally 15 minutes on this so any more questions okay cool and again, thank you, DD, for contributing photographs for me. Okay, so the, the photograph we're working from here is a little bit brighter than I'd like on the side here. But I knew that you guys would probably want to see something from an angle. No, I, I, I don't. I You can turn your references mono, monotone, but I, I kind of monotone, monochrome. But I prefer trying to work from this. But if it's easier for you guys, then you can do. Do you use anything different for a hair texture? No, I don't. What I do, let's go back to the 
Uh, one of these, okay. So, what I would do for my hair texture is I just get less and less uh, with the. Let's go back to our DD. There we go. And again, the nose isn't. I haven't foreshortened that enough. This is what Angie uh, was noticing as well. I haven't pushed it up enough. Um, but what I would do for hair is I would just go very, very low. So you can see my point now is very, very fine. Keep my pasty low. Yeah, you do. You change your measurements. And then I would build in here. Now what you're looking for when you're doing hair is you're looking for clumps. So hair will naturally clump. It's in this case, we've got very straight hair, but I'm looking for strands here. Look, you can see where it's starting to clump here. And if you kind of, again, squint your eyes, you'll pick out the clumps. So again, I'm just keeping with the same brush. I don't like switching brushes. Um, let's just go up here. There we go. And I'm just looking for clumps, and I'll gradually build up on it. Sketchy is very good for doing hair with as well. Let's just go back to our picture. Because Sketchy is actually a really quite fine brush. If you build it down your pasty, it's a very fine brush. And gradually, if I'm building it up, it will actually pick out lines. Uh, and now I'm just kind of moving my finger just up and down. I don't use a stylus either. And it will gradually start picking out strands if I'm doing this. You can probably hear me thudding the pad. That's good. Uh, I'm moving it up and down, then going back and thudding it. And gradually, you'll start picking out kind of a, a, a hair texture. And then if I want to, I go and lighten it. And I go in between that. And again, keep my pasty very low. And you'll gradually build up kind of a hair. Yeah, sketchy brush is perfect, but most of my original sketches in Sketch Club Gallery, they're all done with sketchy. I, I love it, it's a fantastic one. And you can do your portraits from scratch using that, you don't have to use brush like I do. Okay, so let's go back to this very quickly. Yeah, sketchy's great. Alright, here we go. So back to this portrait here, and I just love the, the eyes in this. Because I can... There we go spend all day just in the eyes here. Um, about wrinkles, sorry, where was the wrinkles question? Any special technique for folks with wrinkles? Um, have I got any pictures of people with wrinkles? Yes I have, one second. So wrinkles, again, just keep on thinking about like and like and light and dark. Where we go? Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. No, I don't have a picture. So, again, uh, because light and dark, the, the, the temptation... I'm not going to do it to DD, that would be really rude of me. Hang on. And again, not an expert these either. If I'm working on the, the kind of wrinkles... Um, I don't have a reference here, so I'm just making it up as we go along. Right. Say I've got kind of wrinkles coming off from the eye. Again, go really low opacity and just build it up. So, although I know that this is a real kind of dark line here, keep it low opacity. And as you kind of get in deeper, you'll go slightly darker each time. So each of these is still a case of light and dark when you're doing the, the wrinkles. It's very difficult not to make wrinkles just pure and build it up as you would with any face or lines. Like I said, I'm no expert on this, but treat it as you would with any other kind of 3D picture, especially with this kind of grayscale. Is just build it up gradually and keep your opacity really low still. Or then go in deeper. So, And then when you're happy with that sort of there we go. But I'm, I'm definitely no expert, but I would just gradually build it up. Um, let's, if I go back, sorry, I'm all over the place now. So 
So here, it's just trying to use the contrast again when I was doing it. Okay, we've got 10 minutes left, so I'll go back to DD at an angle. Here we go. And again, just keep on sticking with the same stuff I've done before. I've been measuring in my mind angles on this. So I know the angle up here, we've got to get the angle up here right. There's another angle here. So as soon as I lose the comfort of being a face on photograph, this is when I have to work with my angles. Cheekbone comes out this sort of angle, bring it back in again this sort of angle. Then when I come down here, my next measure point is the lips. So Didi's lips have got from here to the side here, I've got this only very tiny bit to work with. I come in here, I've got a very delicate chin. I've gone too long with the chin here, I can see that already now. So I need to bring the chin in. So it's again it's all angles. Has it crashed? Can you guys hear me? Right, okay, cool. Um, so yes, when I move away from the luxury of a face, like full-on face portrait, it is all working with my angle. So now I'm, I'm deliberately picking the wrong colour, but just so you can see where my brain, this is just how my brain works with this. I'm doing the angles on each part, the hair comes right in there. If I want to make the, the bright here of the face stand out, I've gone and put a darker shade behind it. So again, this was using the the concept I was talking about earlier of light against dark, can I, can I push it out? Again, that's uh, the angle out this end. So you can almost make a very kind of box-like face, like all very angular like a robot and then gradually round it all off. There we go. So that was all done with me just measuring against different bits. Didi's hair from her eye here to here. There's no set measurement for it, so now I need to start working out just how far away that is relative to everything else. The, the angle between here and here. So the angle here. Yeah. So, I know we don't have an awful lot of time with each other now. So, you can hopefully see how my brain is working when I'm doing these sort of things now. Don't go to black and white. They're your last bits that you do right at the very end. In between that, just gradually move your way out from left to right. And do light and dark gradually as you go along. And then hopefully you'll gradually see it coming out of the page. Okay, but like I say, I'm not nowhere near the best on here. So what I recommend you do is start looking at more of the best. Definitely look in the magazine because you've got some of the best in the magazine as well. And you'll find a style that suits you best. This is just one that works for me. Like I said, colour blindness sucks. So this is kind of how I've compensated for it. Yeah, and that's that's all I'm doing. And if you guys find it difficult to spot the shades, like I said, your iPad if you take it um, to the edit function on your photographs use the one that says monotone don't use the one that says tonal, it doesn't work very well okay, and it will allow you to get a grayscale picture straight away if you, if you have trouble doing this from a, a picture and the other thing I was going to say is um, what you can do, do a whole portrait in black and white, do it in grayscale like we've been going and you can just pick one thing one thing, this is what I did with L thing on there and and just put that as the colour and it will make a very kind of stunning combination so here we go everything else is going to remain black and white and grey in here and I think there's an app called something like Colour Splash something like that, it does something very similar and you can just pick one one major colour, one thing that you like the most about the picture and you can just use that and keep that in the picture and keep it standing out Okay, and the other thing I didn't mention, because it generally shows off the, 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 the mistakes I've made in the picture, but you can see this button up the top here, it's the double arrows, allows you to switch the face around. If you're starting to get stuff warping, if you're starting to get stuff that's not quite right, and I've probably got some good examples in my saved here, so if we just load up one of these, you'll, you'll see that the head will start tilting, 
it won't look an angle. I can already see on this one it's, it's going now, but as soon as I switch that over, quite right. So it might look right to me now. So if I'm. It's got an angle up here that it's going for. I switch it back, it's not noticeable to me, but when I switch it this way, you can see the whole thing is kind of tilting this way. So using this is a very good way of kind of checking how things work. When, when it looks right this way, that's fine. Switch it this way, not so good. So then I know, okay, I need to start leaning stuff back more that way. It's a very, very fantastic tool here. It's, it's one I'm still getting to grips with. If you ever have the pleasure of going into a stream with um, Mad at Arms, you'll see that he uses this quite a lot for just checking things. It's a very good function. Okay, so we got... I'll explain why. Um, why? Because your brain, naturally, when you're drawing, it kind of... It, it, it starts getting involved in the picture and it starts thinking everything's really, really good. And it's only when you switch it around the opposite way that you can start seeing where your mistakes are. So if I draw a quick picture here, it's a very quick picture, and I put my eye here and here, etc. I, I might think this is going really well. As soon as I switch it around, I go, oh, right, so the, the face has gone too far over this way. I can bring it back. And and then switch it back again. It's very, very useful. Yeah, or, or distance as well. Distance is another very good one. Um, and again, it's something I don't do enough of. If I'm drawing a picture, let's go back to this DD one here. Because I, I can walk away from my iPad, obviously, but if I zoom it down small, I can compare it back against the original. And it makes it much easier for me to then see the mistakes that I've made in there. I, I know that the head's not tilted far enough back. Uh, if I switch it around this way, okay, I've probably lent a little bit too far to the right, etc. So it's just good ways of just taking a double check on stuff. Yeah, it retrains your brain. It's a very good way of putting it. Yeah, and that's another one on DJ. Sometimes you'll think it's a great picture, you'll go away, you'll come back, and you, you think it sucks. Okay, so I know we're nearly out of time, so... Trying to keep it to 90 minutes. Um, any more questions before we finish? Yeah, so I have the same sort of problem. I think it looks great and I've been really involved in it and then suddenly I upload it and when it's small it looks horrible. Yeah, BP, if I can I send you my rules for it? Well, I'm glad you guys all enjoyed it. Um, I was quite nervous at the start, but everyone made me feel quite welcome. Okay, well, BP, I'd rather just kind of send them across to you rather than type them all here so that it's a surprise, I guess. Okay, well, thank you very much, everybody. Oh, no, Pod, I even, I even mentioned you at one point as well. Alright, well thank you very much everybody, and I know a few of you guys didn't need to learn from me but came here for support, so thank you very much as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close it down so that you guys can get back on with everything else. Um, and thank you very much for spending your time with me. And thank you to... Um, PK and Black Pawn for letting me do this as well.